Aloha, everyone. I'm your host, Christina Laney Mitri, and welcome to Smart Living Hawaii's podcast, where we discuss smart homes and technology, sustainability, healthy lifestyles, and smart business. Today, we'll continue our Sustainable Leaders series and have a talk story with Joshua Powell, the CEO of Revolution. We will jump into the future of solar, HECO's new program that pays cash upfront to get battery storage on your home, and how this helps to make a more resilient grid here in Hawaii. So without further ado, aloha, Josh. Hey, Christina, how are you? Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And before we begin, I usually like to give a little snippet on, on our speaker. So today we have an architect entrepreneur focused on the evolution of distributed, resilient, renewable energy systems and integrated design in residential and mixed use and commercial development. What does that mean? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> well, solar being the contributing factor, I would say. A multi-billion dollar construction portfolio on projects ranging from commercial and industrial to single family hotel and retail with over 100 megawatts of solar energy and storage development and installation. Uh, his objective, he likes to say, a wild and living planet with an abundant global energy, clean energy future. So let's dive right in because we have a lot to discuss today under an hour, hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, background, let's go with background. I know you're here in Hawaii, but maybe you can give a background on where you grew up, uh, what you'd like to share with our listeners, family, and maybe how you ended up in Hawaii. Sure, sure. I, I was born and raised in uh, Idaho, which is, uh, you know, one, one row of states in on the mainland and pretty mountainous uh, area. Um, I've always loved the outdoors um, and, you know, just beautiful places are really important to me. Um, I served as a naval officer in the Pacific uh, a couple decades ago, and um, one of my tours uh, brought me to Hawaii uh, 22 years ago. And my wife and I, Don, uh, decided that Hawaii seemed like the best place in the world to raise our kids. We had a couple little kids at the time, and uh, they're all big kids now, but they all grew up in Hawaii, you know, so this is their home and, uh, you know, Hawaii's, you know, in many ways similar, except, you know, beautiful with, with this, you know, beautiful ring of blue that we have, um, you know, maybe, maybe that, you know, being exposed to wonderful outdoor environments, most of my life, uh, and then some big industrial environments too, as part of what made me want to try to do things to, um, change what's happening with, with, uh, with our climate and with, uh, you know, what I see is sort of the current energy system and how it uh, has negative impacts on, uh, you know, a range of things. And we'll, we'll, go, we'll get into that. But I will just say, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do when I got to, I mean, I came to Hawaii as a Naval officer, um, loved uh, serving in the Navy, um, but wanted to stay put. And, uh, you know, that slowly evolved into as an architect and, and a developer building homes and trying to really embed uh, green principles into that. Um, you know, that's where we met a long yeah. time ago and uh, doing that kind of thing. Uh, and, um, and, and that uh, through some serendipity, uh, you know, and through the Department of Defense, I got some early exposure to solar uh, in the military. Um, DOD has been on that, on that, uh, you know, been, been focused on energy for a long time at different levels, but, um, but in terms of, uh, readiness and resilience, um, you know, it's a, it's a piece of the, of the puzzle of keeping bases and communities operational. Um, we're obviously seeing that firsthand, you know, how energy changes geopolitics with Ukraine and Russia right now. Um, but, uh, I think in many ways, my experiences in Hawaii as a builder and an architect and a naval officer probably led me into the renewable energy business here 
you know, 2005 to 2007, that was when it was really just starting to kick off and, um, you know, formed a uh, revolution with uh, my co-founder, Eric Carlson, and a couple other partners um, in uh, 2009, um, after a few years in the industry. And, um, you know, that's, uh, we'll, I guess we'll talk about the rest, but. but yeah. Well, I wanted to mention, I absolutely love Josh and his wife, Dawn. Um, these two are true examples of love, partnership, friendship, and family. Um, I was, I've known them both my entire real estate career. In the very beginning, when I started over 15 years ago now, um, they were building their home in, in Diamond Head. Actually, they had bought a home that they were renovating. And um, before their time, you know, with green homes here in Hawaii, they were doing that 15 years ago on this house. And I was also able to see uh, them raising their children. Uh, I have to admit, they, if you open their fridge, it was all organic back then. I mean, just a lot of things that they have done 15, 20 years ago is becoming the common lifestyle that people want to practice today. And um, they're just trendsetters when it comes to things like this in a positive, um, healthy life that I have always admired about you guys. So. Really, I, that's I, that's really sweet. And I, you know, it's funny is you saying that brings back a memory of driving down. I think Hunakai in our we had a, a Volkswagen, a Eurovan that was kind of the people mover for our little kids, and uh, talking with Don about you know, eating organic food and like making sure that our kids had organic food. I think this is probably like, I don't know, 2005 or 2004 or something like that. It was a little while ago. And I remember like having this discussion, like, well, if we do that, if we go all organic for our kids, then what's it going to, you know, it's going to cost like another couple hundred bucks a month. Uh, I think actually it was, I want to, the number in my head was like 1200 bucks or something for our food budget. And, um, I remember like having this conversation about that and well and in, and their kids are like at least a foot taller than you no <laughs> I'm just kidding no, no I was just like your kids are how old because they were very I was like you're like yeah and they eat organic food and you open their fridge I'm like whoa I'm like I better st I gotta feed my kids organic when I have kids <laughs> it's more accessible uh, today got, got them a good start it is more accessible <laughs> yep. Yeah, to each is as as time progresses, they will do whatever they do. But you know what? They most people pick up their habits and their way of life from the way they're raised. So, kudos to you guys. Um, on to solar. Let's let's jump right in. I know that you kind of tackled Revolution. Uh, they also have a Revolution in Idaho because they spend their time there as well. So if any listeners happen to be from Idaho, you should definitely reach out to Revolution over there. Um, highly unlikely, but if you do. <laughs> um, yeah, on a different note, uh, we have done several podcasts and blogs and things on solar. Uh, the area of focus for this one will be a little different. Some of them have been focused on um, the money and the rationale behind doing solar um, and energy efficiency and things. But now we're moving more into uh, battery storage and in a sense being off the grid, but supporting the grid. So, um, you know, solar hot water heaters are now mandated for builds and new builds here. Um, solar PV owned and leased have been things we've discussed as well. Um, and a lot of the incentives for state and federal tax um, breaks and credits and stuff. And a lot of these are dwindling away um, at, over time. Uh, so yeah, maybe we can jump right into battery storage and where we're at with that. Cause I think it's something that everybody has wanted to add but it's been too expensive or whatnot. And maybe we can um, jump into that a little bit. You know, I like to, uh, you know, where does Hawaii, um, you know, where are we truly exceptional, right? Where do we lead the world? Um, and it's, you know, as a business, you try to think about how do you simplify, how do you stay focused on things that will 
be beneficial to the business, your people, your customers, and where you, where you can truly be exceptional. Usually doing that helps you to do better in your business. Um, and I think about, you know, there's a few things, you know, Hawaii is like, you know, the best place to surf in the world, or at least darn close to it. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, it's certainly on the, on the top list for most Americans of places they want to go someday and visit. Um, you know, it, uh, you know, I think if, you know, for, uh, those of us living in Hawaii, we probably think about a bunch of other things. It's a very healthy place. I, I you know, I think, I got to think that living here influenced some of our early choices about, you know, what we ate, you know, one of my very early choices when I was, when I had a choice of coming to Hawaii or somewhere else in the Navy, I was thinking about my little kids. And this is like another one of those things. We had been in Japan from 97 to 2000 and we lived just outside of what well, we basically lived in, on a hill in Yokohama. Uh, Yokohama is a beautiful, big, city, but it's an industrial city. And, and the main part of the city was on one side of the hill and all the, the oil refineries and the port stuff were on the other side of that hill. And I remember like daily, like hitting the screen, you know, if we'd open the windows, you hit the screen and soot would just kind of fall down the screen and thinking, oh, that's not a great environment. I also remember I would get colds like every couple months in Japan. And when we came to Hawaii, I noticed the, pretty quickly the colds went away. Um, and I remember thinking like, where, do, where do I want my little kids like, and their lungs and all those things like developing. And I thought well, Hawaii is probably about the best place in the world to, um, you know, just not be exposed to a lot of things that cause cancers and things like that later in life. And, um, you know, so it's, we live in a really exceptional place and it, it's beauty is pretty profound, um, we don't suffer as much as a lot of parts of the world with climate change, even though sea level is certainly going to be an issue in Hawaii. We're not dealing with fires and crazy heat. And even though it might be more humid, less trade winds, uh, by the way, Revolution does air conditioning too. Um, <laughs> Put you know, that we, plug in there. <laughs> yeah, we try, to, we try to respond to what our customers need. And we've certainly seen that grow in the last, um, you know, five, six years. Um, but I want to point out that one of the places where Hawaii is like really exceptional um, right now is energy. Um, we were the first state in the, in the union to mandate uh, hundred percent renewable energy by you know, the R24, 2045. It's a mandate. It's a state law. A lot of states have a, like a goal. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a, we have a law and that law is part of what has helped transform the utility business in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, but we are also doing some of the most advanced energy technology in the world. Um, you know, as you pointed out, we have, uh, HECO has a, uh, a thing called the battery bonus program, which in, in the industry and in technical terms, we call a virtual power plant, which is where consumer-based or business-based energy systems and storage are usable by the utility. They pay you for that. You know, they pay you for the privilege of being able to use it. Um, and those things then can help the grid. And um, the, the, the reason that makes sense in Hawaii right now is there's already enough batteries at a distributed level. So there's batteries spread out in the community with customers, um, you know, with individual uh, homeowners, business owners, et cetera. And all of those batteries can be essentially synced up with software that allows them to help the grid. Um, and, you know, the, the vast majority of those things are grid connected, even though we think about having a, a PV plus battery system as sort of like off grid or, you know, your home can be independent. Most of the time your home's hooked up and it's actually good to have the grid. It's like a giant battery, but then the grid can also use that battery it, with your permission, right? It's not just like they can't just reach in and use it and they pay for that. And um, we have a couple programs. We actually started working on this about uh, three, three years ago with a mainland company called Swell Energy, uh, one of the early companies developing virtual power plant software. Um, we collaborated with those with them and Tesla uh, in a RFP with HECO that was one of the first uh, grid services or virtual power plant programs. And then the PUC pushed out another one um, this su last summer, summer of 2021, to help with P, the, just so people know, PUC stands for Public, Public Utility Commission, right? 
Yep, Public Utilities Commission. And and they're so the ones that oversee they, what they, HECO's doing? Yep, they're sta the state agency. They regulate <clears throat> all facilities in Hawaii. If you sell energy uh, between property lines and manage you know, a grid, you're a utility and you're regulated by the PUC. Revolution is not a utility because we sell to individuals and then they interact with the utility. So we're a service provider, but we like to think of ourselves as an energy services business. We're there to help our customers understand the energy environment and get the things they want to make their homes comfortable and usable and to also you know, get the best benefit they can out of um, the, the things that are available. Um, so there's on Oahu, there's two active virtual power plant programs where you can get a benefit. The battery bonus program um, that, that essentially PUC and, he, and HECO promote um, gets you some cash up front. Um, it has a fixed discharge every evening from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, and that's meant to address a very specific peak of energy usage, energy demand that happens on the grid every evening when we come home from work, turn on air conditioners, TVs, cook, et cetera. And it's it's very specifically targeted at, at solving something that a fossil fuel plant currently does. And that plant is the Kalailoa coal plant that uh, is, is mandated to shut down in September of this year. Um, and that, was, that plant serves to you know, help us with peak demand, which is that what happens when people get home. Is it about 12% of our power? I heard that somewhere, I can't remember now. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. It's, I, I mean, Kali, well, yeah, it's a 180 megawatt plant. We have a 1.2, 1 1.3 gigawatt grid. So yeah, sounds about right. And it, it helps with peak. And, and so what the idea is, is we get enough customers with batteries. Each, each battery is roughly five kW of output power. That's sort of its instantaneous power. And when I say instantaneous, I mean, instantaneous, like, a power plant, like just like your, your car, you know, you start it, comes on, it actually takes a few seconds for it to get going. A coal plant, which is what that plant is, takes even longer. You have to sort of get ahead of it. You have to plan sometimes hours in advance to ramp it up. You know, a gas turbine can go pretty quick, but any of them take, you know, minutes, second, you know, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, few minutes, um, just to get their RPMs up and to be able to produce the energy that's needed. A battery is essentially a, an available reservoir of chemically stored energy that when you say go, it can discharge at its capacity instantaneously. Like the power in, if you have a couple of Tesla power walls, for instance, at home at your house and he goes, you're in a program with HECO and they want to use that energy. As soon as the software says they need it, they have it. It's instant. There's no waiting. There's no turning something on. It's instantaneous. And, and we essentially, with these virtual power plants, you're using basically like low-level artificial intelligence to watch the grid. And it looks at things the grid that are going on on the grid, like variations in frequency, um, demand problems, like more demand than they're producing for energy, et cetera. And it looks at the resource, like the number of batteries and how much energy is in them. And it will instantly deliver support to the grid. And that helps you avoid outages, right? So all these systems can be used, even though there's, there are thousands of systems dispersed, they essentially function like one thing. Um, and Hawaii right now, uh, you, know, the, you know, there are a few places on earth that have as much um, behind the meter storage, it's like another industry term, but as, as we have, and we have it because we have really high energy costs and it makes sense for customers to store the energy they make during the day off of their solar system and then use it at night instead of buying energy because it's, it's just cheaper. So for if they use that program and they're using their batteries, which of course is their energy stored between six and eight, which would make sense for them to use themselves during that time, how much of the battery do they use and then how much is left for them? Or are they then buying that, know, great, that great, from great HECO? Question. Yeah. 
Yeah, great question. <laughs> you're you're a, a mean consumer, and uh, uh, I mean that mean in a very uh, you know nice way. And I I think you know that's a really great precise question. And you know basically with battery bonus, that's the one where you get cash up front. The cash up front really is meant to offset the value you're going to lose over time. And so, so how much is that? Just so everybody knows. It's, it's right now, um, it's $850 per KW. So for one Tesla Powerwall, which is five KW, it would be $4,250 up front for one battery. Um, and that and how is, much does a battery today cost? Oh, uh, let's say the first battery is going to be 11, 12,000 installed. Second battery is, you know, maybe 10,000, so, you know, a little bit less than that. Um, so it's like close to half the cost of the battery up front in a rebate, um, you know, cash back. They also are going to give you a payment um, over that. You know, they'll give you five bucks per month per KW discharged. Um, and the, the, the rub is that the energy that cycles out, you also, you know, like you were just getting at, like normally a Hawaii customer would be using that battery to cycle every day. So they make electrons very cheaply with their solar panels. They store them at night and then they don't buy more energy, right? They're just using the energy they made. And, and right now, PV plus storage system, without any of this other stuff, you're probably making electrons at half the cost of what you'd be buying them for on the grid. So for instance, if I'm using bat electrons out of my battery, maybe they're worth 15 or 16 cents a kilowatt hour. If I'm buying them from HECO, it's 33 cents a kilowatt hour. Is that hour. what it is right now, 33 yeah. cents? So it would be almost double what I would be getting off of my own roof. And, and if I discharge all that energy, which is what's gonna happen in battery bonus, you can discharge it for two hours every day, then I don't, you know, now my stored energy went to support the grid. Now, you know, maybe some of those electrons just go to you anyway uh, during that discharge. So it's a little messy, but the, but the idea is that upfront payment is going to make up for what you didn't get over the 10 years of participation. It's also so a is it a 10 year stint? Is that what it is? Fixed program. It discharges every day for two hours to meet needs on the, on the, at the peak. Uh, you're locked into it. If okay, you, wait, I have a question. Yeah. What if we move to how California is doing it and they have different pricing per for peak times? Yeah. How we, does we, that affect it? They're, they're, one of the challenging things in, in, for my business and frankly for a consumer in Hawaii is that this stuff is changing frequently. And so what I'm talking about was a new set of changes. The PUC literally released an order last Friday Okay. That had that made it better, so they just enhanced it more. They just added that monthly thing onto it, um, so now you get the upfront and a little bit of monthly revenue. Um, so they're making it better because they want more people to do it. Um, you know, we're probably I would say in the next year we'll probably see more time of use, which is what you just described, more programs like that too, um, and we'll continue to see more transformations. What I would say is. These transformations are more, you know, they're not going to, they're, they're, they're going to tend to be more beneficial to consumers going forward. Now, tax credits are set to decline. So there's 26% the federal credit right now. Uh, right now, the law, the federal law that governs that, it drops from 26 to 22 uh, next year. So January 1st, it drops down to uh, 22% January 1st, 2023. Um, there's talk right now of increasing it um, or changing it. Um, this one's the federal, right? The federal, yeah. So there's there are bills in front of Congress right now to in, to improve it. Who knows? There th that was part of the Build Back Better plan last year. Um, obviously, that didn't go through. Um, you know, who knows what'll happen right now? I you know I tend to think, you know, the credit environment. Um, We've gotten a number of extensions on the federal credit over the years, but they are stepping down. It used to be 30%, now it's 26 and it's headed, headed to 22. Um, there's, there's some chance that it could be improved as well. Um, and you know, some of that's climate change, right? And you know, as people get more and more serious about that, they realize that the incentives are pretty important to kind of continue accelerating 
the transition. Well, now everybody needs to get electric cars and then they have to charge them. So, <laughs> yeah, well, there's also another broad trend, which is, you know, electrification, like that we're just going to start using more electrical energy. Um, you know, there's other reasons, you know, electric, we're, we're, we're starting this year a fleet conversion. So we have uh, maybe the first two electric you know, full-size vans. Uh, we have eight on order. We're getting two of them in a couple of months. Uh, we're going to be using recycled solar panels on our warehouse roof to power those vans instead of fossil fuel. Um, so we're doing stuff like that already, but, you know, it, it, they're lower maintenance, lower cost. Um, you know, you're going to see these things more and more. And Hawaii has uh, more of them than most places, frankly. Um, but our, you know, making sure that we produce enough electricity and that we can manage that energy in Hawaii is really important for our future. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know if very many people know this, but I mean, I read it in the advertiser last Friday, or I'm sorry, last Sunday. Um, you know, a lot of people know we import a lot of oil in Hawaii, um, still close to 80% of our power generation. Um, but what I didn't know until, you know, recent events is that most of the oil that we import to Hawaii comes from Russia. <laughs> really? I didn't know that. Go figure. Go figure. You think we could I be I thought it was somewhere in Asia, but I guess not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, and I, I'm just repeating what I read. I don't know the oil industry super well, but, um, but I, you know, there was an article on the front page Sunday advertiser and, and that was you know, part of the emphasis is that the majority of Hawaii's oil is actually Russian oil. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, given given what's going on with Ukraine, it, you know, it'd be really nice to, you know, think that it wasn't Russian oil. But uh, but it also makes me think I'm glad I'm doing what I'm doing, because every right. day we get closer to not having to do that. And I, I guess, you know, I've seen this in, you know, I've in almost 15 years in this industry and, uh, you know, it was 95% when I started and a lot of that movement is homeowners. It's been residential homes and that's not common in most states. Most states, you've got big utility scale, solar developments, things like that, that, that really kind of move the needle. Um, on Oahu, we've got almost 400 megawatts of distributed solar, residential, small commercial, uh, the, and the residential is the fastest to do. It's the easiest to get through mm -hmm. permitting, et cetera. And, you know, that's more than 30% of the whole grid. Mm -hmm. And then just because I forgot to ask this question in regards to the batteries, how long do, just so people know, for solar, if you're having PV, how long do they last, uh, you know, if that you would be probably using them? And then how long does batteries uh, usually last? Well, like I said, we're, we've had commercial customers, we installed systems on 10 years ago, come back to us and say, hey, we want to uh, replace those panels with new panels so they can put more down. And we, you know, those panels that we've taken off the roof are perfectly good panels. They still work. They still produce energy. Um, we're reusing some of those now to power our own electric vehicles. Um, you know, solar panels in general have a 25 year warranty in terms of power production. Um, you know, I think in Hawaii, the thing that's probably, you know, there are aluminum frames, uh, you know, over time, you're going to have corrosion and things like that, that wear them down. Um, but the glass and the silicon itself, um, you know, they could be producing energy for 50 plus years. Um, and they're pre pretty simple, like there's no mechanics to them. It's just circuitry. Um, you know, really, it's, it's quantum mechanics. You've got a photon hitting a piece of silicon, moving an electron out of place. Uh, the photon sort of fakes out the electron and that creates current so that makes the energy. Um, the batteries, much more complicated device. Um, it's not so simple. Um, and there, there are mechanical parts. They have cooling, they have other things involved. Um, most of the batteries out there right now have a 10 year warranty from the manufacturer. Some of them you can buy up that warranty, like Tesla, for instance, you can add it, you can add a aftermarket, you know, not a really an after you buy it when you buy your system, but you can add up to a 25 year warranty on it. Um, but, you know, I would say, you know, batteries have a defined life cycle too. Like they have so many cycles and they're going to start to degrade. 
And the reason most batteries for homes have a 10 year warranty is that's sort of how they're oriented in terms of life cycle. Um, and usually what that means is you're gonna be at 60 or 70% of day one in terms of how much energy it can deliver at that 10 year point. Um, there's gonna be some degradation as it goes. And we, we see that that's improving. We've seen that a lot with the Tesla vehicles, like they tend to have, you know, the batteries last longer, they have more range um, over time. And that's just process product refinement. Um, as they manufacture more, they just get better at it and yeah. product improve. So let's see here. What have we not tackled yet? <laughs> um, maybe you could, uh, let's see. Kiko kind of went through uh, well, the different I'll, programs. I think I'll, you only went through one program. Yeah, let me talk about both programs. So I, I yeah. talked earlier about battery bonus, okay? So that's that's the the program most people have heard about, battery bonus. And that's the one where you get some upfront cash, which is very attractive, but it's worth remembering that upfront cash is actually meant to cover the, the cost of the energy you're gonna to give to the grid. Um, and, it's, and it's a fixed duration, a discharge every day, it's a 10 year commitment. So the other program, um, which we offer, and again, we were in a, partner, you know, in a partnership with this company, Swell Energy and Tesla to, to win that program. Um, so not everybody can offer that program. Um, so in our, in the case of Revolution, we have both of these programs. We can walk a customer through either one and kind of give you the plus and minus, but I'll, I'll do the short and sweet. So we, we talked about battery bonus, upfront cash, fixed duration, 10 year commitment, um, depletes the battery every day. Um, home battery. So. Yeah. Home battery rewards. So, I mean, you know, one downside of, of battery bonus is that your battery is going to be pretty low state of charge at 8 p.m. when it's done. So if you had an outage at 9 p.m., you might not get through the whole night on that in that program, unless you had more batteries that weren't in the program. Um, the other program, Home Battery Rewards, is doesn't have any upfront cash. It's a five-year program, but it's open-ended. So it's kind of like a you know, kind of like a cell, you know, a no contract cell phone, right? It's like, you know, you can, you could be in it for three months and then decide to leave the program. You don't, you're not fixed into it. You can come and go if you want, uh, but you get the most benefit if you stay in it. That program is not a fixed discharge. It's a grid services program. So there's like a pallet of services that the manager, Swell Energy, delivers to HECO. And they have all their batteries arrayed and they can do, uh, one thing like I call, I'll, I'll talk about some of these services, but basically like they can, they can take up energy. Like, let's say we got a lot of extra wind power. They can, they can dump energy into the batteries. They can discharge energy if the grid needs energy, just like the battery bonus program. Um, or they can also use the batteries to regulate frequency. One of the problems we have on our grid, our grid's like a, a, a hub and spoke without a rim, without a wheel. Right. We got a bunch of lines that go up valleys and they're not all interconnected. Some of them just, you know, they run up a ridge or they go down a valley and they stop. And if you're at the end of a circuit like that, you have more frequency problems than if you're downtown. Mm -hmm. And you have more frequency problems because there's what's called line loss. You know, you lose some of the energy and the frequency dissipates as you go, you go out further on the grid. And HECO does a lot of things to regulate, you know, make manage that. But if you have a bunch of batteries on the end of a circuit like that, you can actually support, you know, you can have, you know, you can use those batteries to support the, the, the frequency of the electricity on the grid. And how uh, do you support the frequency with the batteries you're storing? They just push little bits of power basically back onto the circuit to, to improve it. And, and so in, a, in the home battery rewards program, they, they have sort of a menu of uses. They can tap the battery so many times a, a month. And, and then they actually want to always keep the batteries ready. So they're also managing the battery to kind of be full all the time and, and have available energy. In that, in that program, you get paid on average about $50 a month per battery. Um, and in a, you know, in a five-year program that, that could be, you know, it is, you know, thousands of dollars, um, that adds up, but it's incremental. It's, you know, kind of, you know, you know, pay as you go, if you will. Um, both of these programs, the money back 
if the money back exceeds what you're buying, like if you already had a low bill and you're not buying energy, HECO will send you a check. You'll actually, it's not just credit, you'll get money for what you're doing. Um, so for customers that, you know, let's just say for battery bonus, if you have an existing net metering system, like an older system that's net metering, you wanna add batteries, battery bonus is probably a really good way to go. You've already got one for one energy with HECO. You can expand your net metering system under that program. That's pretty exciting. People, it's been hard to change or modify or expand mm -hmm. systems. And so they've now, there's no cap. You can add as much under net metering. If you're participating in that program, you can actually add more to net metering if you already are in the program. So that's, that's pretty exciting for, but it's only for NEM customers. So everybody that's got a system in the last five or six years hasn't been net metered anymore. NEM is for, net metering for people. Yeah, yeah. And for, for people in that aren't in net metering, it's not as valuable to be in that program. And we think Home Battery Rewards, the other program, sort of offers more flexibility for those, those newer entrants or customers that are just for the first time going solar today. So um, what about, okay, so when you said that they move power and they might fill up your battery, when they do that, they're not charging you, right? It's just, they're dumping it in there. You they, just have well, to get, have it, more. it does, the, the accounting for the movement of those electrons does get tricky. What I'll say there is they handle all of that. And the customer benefit, the 50 bucks is net of all of that. So they're making sure that you're gonna get the savings you got with your solar system that you were anticipating. And then you're getting another 50 bucks a month per battery on top of it. Okay. But it is tricky, like all the movement of electrons, the accounting for that. It's not, you know, they, the way HECO tracks that is electrons back and forth on your meter. <clears throat> and, you know, they have dollars associated with that. Um, but that program accounts for it. And your benefit is net of any charges for electrons coming and going. Interesting. Well, so those are the two programs. And so you guys are one of the few that offers that program. Yes, yes. Um, and so then- we, inter we introduced the Home Battery Rewards program on Oahu and, um, you know, they're, that, that program right now is only available for uh, Tesla Powerwall customers. Obviously that's not the only battery out there. The, the battery bonus program has a, you know, several different batteries that are um, acceptable to it. Um, and, you know, again, we, we uh, partnered with these guys um, and Tesla to get that other program going. Um, and, and I mean, the reality is there's going to be more, I mean, and we're certainly not, you know, we're not going to be the only one. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, you know, you kind of talk about like blue sky growth or, I mean, there's, there's enormous opportunity and, you know, so right now. With all of these uh, things that are happening, you know, today, like where are we, I guess, where are we at with, with um, some of the new, I mean, I mean, this is like the newest things going on right now, but I mean, what are some of the new crazy things that you're seeing in solar outside of like, you know, this grid, this virtual grid side of things. Is there some new things coming down the pike as well? You know, I mean- Maybe there, like there, materials or different yeah, types of there, product there, and stuff. Yeah, there have been panel efficiency improvements um, over the years. So our, our systems are, you know, you know kind of, I would say it's incremental, but you see like almost like a 1% improvement every year. Um, I think one of the big things is energy storage is gonna improve a lot over the next decade. But it's already pretty good. It's gotten to a good place. Um, we're seeing more integrated products. So we're just starting to see the first, you, you know, your, your listeners may have heard of Tesla Solar Roof. Um, we're not offering that in Hawaii right now. Um, and, uh, you know, you can, you, I mean, other, other folks do. Um, I've kind of slowed us down on that because, I, you know, I think there's actually, you know, there's some, it, it, there's some things that, about flashing systems that I think are important to work out on. And you're on, talking about where the um, the roof itself is our solar panels, like each. Yeah. yeah, it's an integrated product. Yeah, so we've done a bunch of those systems in Idaho over the last couple of years. I mean, they're beautiful. 
Um, I, they cost about three times as much as a normal PV system. So they're not cheap. Um, I would say it's sort of very high end. It's almost like a, a slate roof or a Japanese tile roof in terms of like the cost of a system. Um, so we still, our primary product is, is you know, typically gonna be just a modular panel system. Um, we've also seen, um, we're starting to see some newer integrated products out there. There've been a few renditions of products that are similar to like asphalt shingles. Um, you know, I think our attitude there is, you know, we really take seriously our role in business as, you know, I, I want, I don't want to make it sound, you know, curate is maybe a tricky word because it sounds kind of, um, you know, we're not running an art gallery here, but, but, uh, but it's like, we have to go out there and look at these products and make good choices and um, think about what we offer to consumers. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. We started an air condi conditioning business about six years ago. Um, we started the air conditioning business because we thought we needed to enhance the, you know, we knew that was a big thing. Like a lot of our customers were adding air conditioning and then they'd call us and complain about why they're PV system wasn't, you know, saving them as much money as it did before. We thought, well, we better just help them. You know, we knew why, you know, they're using more energy. Um, and so we figured we better get into it ourselves. And at first we looked at um, integrated DC air conditioners, which are also available out there. So you have solar panels that direct feed uh, an air conditioner. Yeah, and there's, we... there's some who is doing that too, right? But well, that yeah, only yeah. works during the day. I mean, I guess when you mostly need it. So, so right. We bought a few of those systems and tested them ourselves. And we found a couple of things. One, most of the air handling units were made by one manufacturer. And then a lot of companies were just rebranding them. They call it OEM, right? Original equipment manufacturers. Like, um, and, and we also found, you know, we took them apart and we found that they didn't have phenolic coatings and they didn't have the kinds of things they needed to make them, you know, last in Hawaii. And we ultimately made a decision that we were going to focus on brands that we knew would perform well in Hawaii. So we sell Mitsubishi and Daikin. We, you know, they're regular, you know, you know, AC, you know, AC, I'm, I'm, you know, air, air conditioning AC. I'm, we're also talking alternating current AC, but they're, they tie into the AC grid of the home. And we the way we look at it is we're building you an energy system, your photovoltaics, your battery, and then when we want to augment that with, with more things that improve the electrified environment in the home, we just and look for They're more energy efficient too. They're more efficient yeah. too, yeah. yeah. So we look and, at- Yeah, that's yeah. a huge thing at, for sure. Yeah, contemporary products that are, that are going to be the highest efficiency, best warranties, best manufacturers. And just so everybody knows that this is an opportunity to also get rebates with Hawaii Energy. Yep. on um, products like these as well. So. Yeah, so we do solar thermal, which is hot water, um, air conditioning. Um, generally, when you're improving efficiency, there's some opportunity with, with Hawaii Energy. Love those guys, you know, great, great uh, benefit to the consumer in Hawaii for when you're doing improvements. You do pay for it on your HECO bill and that's yep. why the yep. money. So take advantage of all of yep. their rebates. <laughs> I know you're, you're paying for it one way or the other, but I was going to say, we do the same thing with PV. We do the same thing with battery storage. You know, we look out there at the products that are available. And so when we got new technology coming in, we're not, we're not always going to be the first guys to like, okay, here, here's something brand new, go try it. I mean, we usually will buy a couple of examples. We have a demo, we have a warehouse out in Waipahu. We have our own demonstration roof there. We put stuff up on the roof and let it sit there and bake in the sun in Waipahu for a year and just check it. You know, how's it performing? How's the plastic doing? How are the parts doing? And, you know, Hawaii is a really unique environment. Things, you know, we've had, I can't tell you how many, you know, just as an architect, how many roofing products, like Hawaii is known for destroying roofing products. Like, you know, almost every class action lawsuit about roofing got, got its start in Hawaii because of a roofing failure that appears here earlier than on the mainland. Apparently uh, people were getting roofs from the hail that one time back yeah. in Kailua. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, blue, roof, there's, roof, sale, there's, there's roof sales, uh, roof sales crews that they call storm chasers that <laughs> run around looking for hail damage, especially on the 
you know, in the Midwest and Texas and stuff like that. But, but so we take it really seriously though, that, that role of making sure the, the products that we deliver are going to last and, you know, we're going to be around to service those products for our customers. How do you see the oceans? I mean, when you're closer to the water, has it been a big um, difference on how the, how the product lasts? Is this salt know, water? We're, we're very careful about picking uh, solar panels that don't have any exclusion zones in terms of what we sell to our customers. So a lot of panel, a lot of stuff, people don't realize this, but some, you know, some have like special language in their warranty that says you can't install within, you know, sometimes it'll be say a kilometer or two kilometers from the ocean. Oh. And, you know, I mean, it's like, think about it. If you live in Hawaii Kai, you know, like good luck getting more than two kilometers away from the ocean, right? I mean, almost everything is going to be. Yeah. Um, and so we're just, you know, we know that stuff's out there and we just avoid it. We, we make sure that we pick products that don't have any limitations. They can be installed right on waterfront homes. Um, you know, I think from a, you know, we, from a design detailing point of view, we try to think about how our products go together, not having dissimilar metals. You know, we just, you know, try to do a good job there. Um, and we warranty our workmanship, you know, and, and we take that seriously. We've been around for 12 years. So something. Yeah, there's a here. home that I just saw in, in Diamond Head, just under eight mil, just got listed and home was beautiful, by the way, if anybody's interested in Diamond Head Circle. <laughs> um, nice. And they have 60 panels up on theirs. And, and I think um, I asked them about them and they have, I think they have two uh, Tesla power walls with that one. And um, I guess they had mentioned Revolution did the work there on that home and that they're coming out to check out their, all of their panels and everything too. So, I mean, that's another huge thing when you are looking for solar is to find that reputable, you know, you know, company that's going to still be around and working on anything that should arise. You know, Revolution's been a very um, reliable source for most everybody that I've ever talked to. So, I mean, not just that he's a friend, <laughs> but no, I mean, I mean I, they, they really are. I mean, they, you, you did, did a great job at, you know, you know, everything that you've done over the past 12, 15 years to make sure that your product is and services are there, you know, so. I think, what do we, what do we say in business in Hawaii? Small island, right? I mean, you turn around, you're going to see somebody, you know, and you, you're not going to make it long-term in Hawaii if you don't take your customers seriously and take their needs seriously. So it's a tricky business. Things change all the time. Technology is changing, rules are changing. So there's, I like to think of our marketing like education. We have this constant job of educating consumers and helping them understand this stuff, bring it up to speed. You actually have the wrong guy talking today. My, my business partner, <laughs> Eric Carlson, Dave Gorman, Colin Yost, all are better than me at explaining this stuff. I get I get really excited about the technical stuff and, uh, you know, I love- He dives into the electrons. <laughs> I'm passionate about what we do. And uh, I think it's really, really cool stuff. I think, I mean, I think we are really at the very vanguard of transforming the entire energy system globally. And I think, you know, Hawaii is probably one of the most exciting places in the world to be doing it because we're doing it ahead of California, New York, every, you know, every other market in the US, we're doing it first. And so we get to learn a lot. It, it, it's a little bit, it can be challenging, you know, from business you, when you're constantly changing, but it makes it exciting. And, um, and we pride ourselves in being really good at making the best choices and you know, making sure that we deliver, even in an environment like that, where it's changing, we deliver consistent quality, customer service. And, and then when we make mistakes, we go fix them. You know, we take care of things, sort it out. I was just in uh, San Diego this past week and met with a green realtor over there who's been doing things in that industry for maybe 10, 15 years now. And um, I was talking to him about solar too. And, and he was saying how, I mean, I thought we had like the highest rates for- um, for San Diego rates for 45 cents. 
yeah it is I was just like thinking we had like the highest and then he was like saying that it's about the same because they do have you know different times yeah. you know. so yeah. it's and I mean I see that coming here in, in Hawaii and um we'll see how that plays a role I think it's only going to make your business <laughs> keep no going. I, I you know right we're in a you know with what's happening geopolitically we're going to see oil prices go up and they're probably going to be going up for at least the next 12 months and we're going to see our energy prices go up um our energy prices in hawaii right now are lower than they were at, at you know in 2008 2009 it's when, lower in hawaii than in california right now california yeah. is over five dollars a gallon just for for gas so it, and it's, it was insane i was like what yeah. So the best thing you can do in Hawaii right now, just like it was the best thing 10 years ago and five years ago, is get yourself a PV system with some batteries and get an electric vehicle. I mean, if you so want to- electric vehicles are now, I just heard this too, they are now becoming or the option of being a storage, right? So- or, so for yeah, yeah. Might as so, well throw that in there. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's all part of the, vehicle, the, the virtual power plant stuff, right? And I'll just say, you know, the virtual power plant things we're talking about, you know, using batteries that are out on the grid um, to make, to help participate with the grid and manage it and make it more stable. That's here to stay. Like that stuff is not like a, a short-term thing. It's yeah. going to grow. The, the reason it's going to grow is if your battery or my battery gets enrolled and I get compensated and you get compensated to the tune of 50 bucks a month for the battery, Right now in Hawaii, that's, you know, a fifth of the cost of what it takes for the utility to do their own peak management, where they invest, you know, and really it's us, right? Like, you know, if you get an incentive for your battery to participate on the grid, like when we think about what's getting rate-based for the consumer, um, that, uh, that battery, uh, you're paying for it you're paying for the PV panels. You may be getting some tax incentives. That's coming from the state government, the federal government. Really, it's just coming from other taxpayers. It's a way of you know, recycling some of the capital in our economy. Um, but the incentive the PUC gives you every month or even upfront is a, is a tiny investment compared to what they have to do to build a power plant. And if they build a power plant, they buy the whole thing and we all pay for it in our rates. And so even though, you know, so number one, some of that money goes back to the consumer, goes back to rate payers. And number two, it's a lot less than it would cost to develop new energy resources on the grid that are owned by the utility or even rented by the utility at a at large scale. And, you know, there's certainly people that would probably argue with me about some of those economics, but we're essentially proving that in Hawaii, as we've been proving over the last decade that renewable energy is better than fossil fuel energy on the grid, we're going to start proving the virtual power plant piece of this. And um, the Ford Lightning is um, the first vehicle, the first electric vehicle where they're talking about a bi-directional charging system. And if you think about your vehicle, if you've got a Tesla or you know, any other electric vehicle, most of the batteries in those vehicles are three or four times the capacity of the home battery that you're likely to have. And so if you, if you combine the vehicle and your home battery and you're bi-directional, you really have pretty powerful resources. And let's say all those vehicles, if they all plugged in when they went to work and they're sitting there on the grid, well, if I've got a bunch of solar or a bunch of wind during the day, I can just be dumping that energy into those vehicles. And when they go home, they can be supporting us, whether it's during an outage or for peak or, you know, you know, heaven forbid, uh, a hurricane, you know, think about Puerto Rico, right? I mean, when Puerto Rico went through that hurricane Maria, I think what, three, four years ago, they didn't have much distributed storage infrastructure. They didn't have much solar. Hawaii now has a lot. And if something like that were to happen, even though some houses may not survive it, most will, and they'll have energy systems. And those energy systems will be up whether or not the grid is. And so we're also kind of simultaneously, by, by spreading this stuff out, we're building a much more resilient Hawaii. Um, and vehicles will be part of that. 
certainly I think in the next couple of years, we'll start to see that. And Hawaii will probably be first. That's awesome. Well, I think we're pretty much wrapping up anything else you want to throw in there. No, it's great. I enjoy the opportunity to chat with you about it. And uh, yeah, uh, I know it's been a while uh, since we chatted, um, let alone do a podcast. Yep. <laughs> um, anyhow, I just wanted to say thank you so much, Josh, for jumping in today and taking your time to share with everybody else here that is listening. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast, which is at www.smartlivinghi.org. You can also follow us on Instagram, which is at smart underscore living underscore Hawaii. Uh, you can like us on Facebook. And what is the best way for them to reach you or your team? Oh, uh, 748-8888 or www.revolution.com. Uh, All right. I think that's it. We will have some of the info up soon and I think we're going to be launching this podcast it's up next on the docket so stay tuned probably in the next couple of weeks or so um all right thank you so much Josh all right Christina. Mahalo. thank you bye